discussed the CPI, calculating the basket, understanding what goods would go into that basket, and then thinking through what does the CPI tell us. It really gives us that the CPI itself is a measure of overall cost of goods and services purchased by a typical consumer when we compare those over time because they've been uh, because it is an index right because we are creating a base year we can then figure out the only thing that's changing is prices and we can figure out inflation rate as a result and that inflation rate is really just the change in the price index from a previous period and that inflation rate itself tells us uh, over a given period the measure of the increase in the overall price level. There's a few things we were talking about that would go into this basket of goods that we need to be aware of. And I just want to list them out here. So a few problems that we run into with CPI. The first problem that I want to consider is substitution bias. Substitution bias. And substitution bias is really one of the problems here that we could think of that might become immediately available to you, right? Which is that if the price of shoes increase, and, and this was generic enough, right? But uh, let's say it's maybe more specifically the price of uh, the the price of tennis shoes, right? You might, I don't know, you might shift more towards sandals or towards boat shoes or towards a different type of shoe uh, on milk. Right, we know that there's a few different types of substitution there, and, and these these don't have great substitutes uh, as far as uh, the things that you can switch out because we need shoes, and for the most part you need milk, but maybe that this is just milk, maybe this isn't milk that you're having with your cereal, this is instead milk that you uh, are drinking and you just enjoy drinking, it. and maybe you've decided that you're going to switch to some sort of other drink in the morning, something of that nature. People have those options all the time, and it can be very difficult to pick up on the substitution bias. So when prices of con uh, so in essence, when prices increase, consumers will change their buying habits, and uh, and they find those substitutes, and those substitutes can really dig into what happens, right? If the CPI has held this basket consistent, but people are no longer buying twenty. Uh, 20 units of milk, they're instead buying 15 units of milk, well then this price change doesn't matter as much relatively speaking. So one of the things that we can think of here, there's a second uh, kind of drawback or one of the problems that we think of with the with the CPI and that is the introduction of new goods and this happens all the time so this is kind of this is the addition of new goods, addition, introduction, addition of new goods. And in technology, this happens all the time, and it's one of the things that we can uh, that can be difficult to pick up in the CPI. So there's a variety, right? And that variety of increases, that variety increases your options, and it increases your well-being. You can think about one example would be like the iPhone in 2007. Before that, we had cell phones. But now there was an addition of a new type of good on the market, and that new type of good was giving consumers extra options. Uh, it was extra options for having computing ab uh, availability to you, as uh, extra options for being able to surf the internet, and that in basically makes your it may, right. What does it do? It, it makes the the dollars that you are spending. It gives them more options. It gives you more opportunity. Uh, to use those where you prefer to use them. It gives you, in essence, more substitution, right? More options there. And so these are connected in a way. There's kind of a third thing that's also connected in this, which is quality change. And all of these uh, change here, th these aren't necessarily, I mean, they're, they're separate in and of themselves, but, but they are very connected in that what happens with a quality change, well, you can think about, again, this kind of goes back to technology often. Think about uh, for example, a TV. I mean, there's been huge changes in the TV market just in the last five to ten years. In over five, you know, over five years, in in maybe uh, maybe over a year or two, we can pick up on some of those changes and we can adjust the basket based off of those changes. So now we're going from a flat screen TV to a uh, to a high def flat screen TV, right? Or those types of changes in, in uh, computers, we see screen changes and, and that type of thing where you're getting a little bit more for your money or you're getting more computer processing for your money. Uh, and what do we think of when we when we think of this? Well, one of the thing would, things would be if the quality of the good were to decrease, then the value of your dollar is decreasing. So if the quality changes but the price doesn't change, then you are spending the same amount of money for less 
for for less quality of the good that is that's not good and that's one of the things that can sometimes not be captured by CPI if the quality does change or you could think about it the other direction if the quality were to increase and if that quality of the good increases and you're paying the same amount then in essence you are getting a better value for your dollars in both of these cases it can be hard to reflect so over time the CPI will make changes for quality we will change this basket to adjust for quality changes but in the short term that can be very difficult to capture and it's just three things that we need to keep in mind when we think about what goes into the basket how do you make the, the determination of how much of the basket should be housing versus food versus entertainment uh, versus alcohol versus any number of other things that might go into the typical consumers buying pattern